Hello, everyone. This is Kelly Beard of KarmicTools.com, and this is your weekly forecast for December 18th to the 24th of 2022. So this might be a little longer than usual. You might want to grab a cup of tea in your journal and sit down for this one. There's lots of movement this week leading up to Christmas. Unfortunately, this is when we need to be turning inward and silent, not rushing about to please and appease family and friends. But here we are. We're going to find a way to balance both. So let's dive in. Cirrus is going to retrograde in Libra and go direct in Virgo. Altogether, Cirrus spends about three months in Virgo and six months in Libra. So I have covered both below and you will be reminded along the way. So that is nine plus months of personal processing to know what feeds and nourishes you on the deeper levels, as well as recalibrating the partnerships that we're keeping while clearing away those which are no longer supportive and positive. Deep breath. So when Cirrus is in Virgo, the great mother rules what and how you nurture and like to be nurtured, as well as how you contain, develop, and protect yourself and your creative babies, among other things. Cirrus in Virgo requires certain skills, discernment, and self-discipline, and a desire to help others be more efficient and effective. Acts of service are the way to nurture at this time, or allow yourself to receive those acts of service. Imagine receiving nurturance can be very difficult for some. Being useful and relevant to others is very important with this placement. But up in the sky for the rest of us, it is a time to do a cleanse or some self-care to reset your individual systems. Nurture your physical body and individual systems for living. Okay, that's your day-to-day routine, basically. It's time for an upgrade that is more appropriate to here and now. Self-worth is developed along with a new skill set right now. So try to learn something that can make you more valuable to the team. You're developing a rhythm that takes some practice to master. But Cirrus only comes around to Virgo every four to five years, so this is a pretty big, important reset. Deep breath. Now, the last time it retrograded over this cusp was 1977. I always think it's fun to look those things up. But according to Asteroid Goddesses by Demetra George and Douglas Block, Cirrus describes the ways in which we face the issues of self-worth and self-esteem, relationship to our parents and children, attachment, dependency, Loss, separation, rejection, grief, sharing, work, and productivity. So deep breath. That's a lot on the table for our Virgo department, which is our individual system, and our labor department, which is our relationships and partnerships with others. It's how we nurture and like to be nurtured. So you might imagine that in Libra, nurturing takes the form of beauty, harmony, balance, creativity, and kinship. This is a chance to check in with our primary relationships to initiate a new level of balance and reciprocity. It's a good time to socialize or host a gathering where you'll bring all your favorite people together for an evening of lively conversation, good food and drink and kinship, like I said. If you're working on your professional partnerships, then this is a good energy to help you move in a new direction there, too. You can initiate a new four to five year cycle of collaborating with others in all new ways. Reflect on the last four to five years and consciously choose to improve going forward. So I'm going to say self-care and how you interact with others is both up for renewal. You can also use this energy to infuse your creative babies with some beauty and essence that reflects your renewed sense of self and self-worth. So deep breath. An extended party in your Virgo Libra departments asking you to give it a little comfort and nourishment. Provide a little more security and foundation there. Look at what you've been developing over the last four to five years and what you would like to bring into form over the next four to five years. These ladies are really powerful to work with consciously. So at the bottom of that paragraph, I have included the exact dates. So Cirrus went into Virgo September 29th all the way to December 18th, which is this week when she moves into Libra. December 18th, she'll be in Libra until March 22nd when she's retrograde and re-enters Virgo. She'll be in Virgo until she goes direct and re-enters Libra June 21st. And then she doesn't enter Scorpio until September 15th. In between, the things you need to know is she retrogrades at 6 Libra on February 3rd and goes direct at 23 Virgo May 6th. So these are your dates. If those energies are important, I have a huge Virgo Libra stellium, so I already know I'm rebirthing a lot. 
That is Sunday the 18th. We jump to Tuesday, December 20th, when Jupiter re-enters Aries until May 16th. This is its final pass. It kind of dipped back and forth into Pisces. So we've been basking on this cusp as well. Jupiter in Aries initiates a brand new 12-year cycle for all of us. It's personal for those who have Jupiter in Aries, Libra, or Cancer Capricorn. Every time Jupiter enters a new sign, we get an an opportunity to expand that area of life, which is the house. So over the last year, Jupiter has been moving back and forth over the Pisces-Aries cusp and is now finally entering Aries once and for all. So all the imagination and dreaming up of the new truth, story, and belief system is essentially done for now with Jupiter's input. Won't be back to Pisces for 12 years. And by then, Neptune will be gone. So this is a big deal that Neptune is part of this big dream that we're conjuring right now together, socially and collectively, by the choices we're making individually, okay? Now we activate that new identity and purpose and begin a new 12-year journey. If 12 years is too much to wrap your brain around, I would encourage you to think in terms of three-year increments. The Trinity energy is very powerful. And when working with Jupiter, you are being exposed to an expanded awareness of a larger truth of which you are an integral part. It is vital to work with this entity when you are consciously co-creating the authentic truth and story of your own. When Jupiter is in Aries, you get an opportunity to develop your individuality and rebirth your identity in some way. It's a clean slate, new beginning with some brand new consciousness guiding you. You've learned a lot in the last three, six, nine, and 12 years. And now it is time to step up and into new leadership roles. You are supported for self-education and being proactive on your own behalf. It is a time when you are more optimistic about doing things your own way with a strong faith in yourself to be fearless and just do it, as they say. Just do it. No talking, hemming and hawing, just action. The idea is to take smart, effective action based on this renewed consciousness and the new story that you want to tell. It's important to cultivate a healthy routine with daily physical and spiritual practices. Healthy competition can be fun and just the thing to help you launch this new story in a more exciting way. So challenge yourself to push your edge this coming year and see what you are able to get off the ground. Do what you can to remain sovereign and independent while holding your own structure and making responsible decisions, and you will be rewarded beyond measure. That's how Jupiter rolls. You take care of you. You do self-preservation. You do responsible choices, like it says, and sky's the limit. Don't let the fire drive you too hard, or you'll just burn out. Remember, Jupiter makes everything bigger, and fire in a container creates warmth and nourishment, but a fire out of control is destructive and indiscriminate. So do your grounding work, stay in a good rhythm, and focus on self-preservation with an eye toward what's best for all involved. Deep breath. This is a big new beginning, like I said, all around winter solstice. This is a powerful point for Jupiter to be at zero Aries right when the sun gets to zero Capricorn. We got a lot of things moving to zero in the new year. So this is going to be a new beginning no matter how you slice it. Personally, socially, collectively, it is a new day. So as that hits on winter solstice, powerful energy. Sun in Capricorn will square Jupiter in Aries at that zero point of possibilities. A square allows us to move to new levels It's a stability builder. 90 degree angles stabilize things. This is a good thing to co-create with consciously. All we have to do here is work out a few individual versus the big picture things. This is a powerful energy, and with that comes the necessity of discernment. It provokes you to get lots of things accomplished, and that's a good thing. However, beware of taking on more than you can actually handle or maintain on your own. Having said that now, if you need that little push to get some things done, then this is just the energy for you. It carries with it the optimism necessary to allow you to go beyond your norm and stretch in new ways. Sometimes there can be a tendency towards self-righteousness with this energy, but try to make it self-directed and you will benefit greatly. Walk your talk and fully embody your truth. However, 
if you turn it on others, demanding that they believe what you believe, you may have some difficulties. Be open and receptive. Have a don't know mind because you never know what you may learn from another's perspective along the way that could really help you now or in the future. Okay, this is opening you up beyond your individual perspective to stretch. This is why I keep getting these messages from the ancestors, angels and the animal spirits to think bigger. With Jupiter moving into Aries, we need to expand that vision that we want to cultivate or bring into form over the next three, six, nine and 12 years with Jupiter expanding that. Now, this is our solstice day. This is a very busy day for Kelly. 12 noon, I'll be with Shanta Gabriel doing opening prayers with the archangels for the day. Later at sunset, 6 p.m. Eastern, which is 3 p.m. Pacific. So it won't be quite sunset for y'all. It's sunset in mountain time for me, as that's where I wanted to do the fire. So we're going to have a fire ceremony to bless my new soul sister's circle. So I've posted that video invitation to let you all know it is ready to roll with winter solstice as my offering to open it up and invite you in. I can't wait. Those of you who are looking to do seasonal ceremonies at the turn of the wheel, winter, spring, summer, fall is four of them. The other four are the lunar gates of power at Taurus, Scorpio and Leo Aquarius times. So we get eight total where we're going to do a fire ceremony ritual. I've got some sacred crafts lined up I want to try to do and encourage you all to do with me. It's just going to be really magical community soul work where the work that we're doing at the turn of the wheel is to support and protect ourselves and our lives and our choices, of course, but it's all dedicated to Mother Earth, Father Sky, and all life. You know, that's our ceremonial blessing back. Now, the monthly Soul Sister Circle will be more about you, the individual. We'll do lots of things each month to support you directly. But these turn of the wheels, group events that I want to do for the year of 23, this will be the first full year I'll be able to pull it off, I think, now that I have the teaching platform where we can house all the replays and whatnot. So this is one you're going to have to register through there in order to do, even though it's technically free. But it'll be the only way you get to see the replay. So you have to register with this new different link. This is not on my community event page. Well, it is, but it's going to link you to where the platform is to register. So I hope that those of you looking forward to doing community ceremony with me will join me that evening. Like I said, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. The next day is Thursday, the 22nd, when Venus will try on Uranus. This is pretty juicy to have on the backside of our solstice day. This energy is likely to bring a little excitement into your life one way or another. It is a good time to do something different or try something new and consciously put yourself in situations where you have to improvise or think on your feet. We are in times of breaking old patterns and resetting them in more positive, effective ways. You can still live your true values and priorities, but something has changed within. This blessing from the cosmos allows you to align with more personal authenticity which in turn is infused into all that you love and treasure. Relationships will have an unusual energy to them too. An established relationship may get shaken up or sparkle with some extra spice, or a new relationship begun under this influence may be stimulating and unusual, but probably short-lived too. This is not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually perfect for improvising and experimenting with new ideas and expressions to see what you actually respond to what your heart aligns with and responds to. Use this energy to soak up some good energy and rare wisdom from those who are unique, those who do things differently and live life to the fullest. That's our Uranian Aquarian babies. (laughs) They doing it. Deep breath. Then Friday the 23rd is a very big day. We have the Capricorn super new moon, first of three super new moons in a row happening at one degree. So again, with this zero degrees is a big thing this whole year. And for 2023, we have these three super new moons, one of which is exact, which is very rare. The last time, I don't have that date in front of me because I just have the 23 date, but the next time is until 2034. So it's rare. And we have two super full moons at the end of the year. And here's the deal, y'all. This month, it's the super new moon in Capricorn. Next month, it'll be Aquarius. That's the exact. And the third one will be in Pisces. 
on the back end of the year in August, we'll get a super full moon in Aquarius and a super full moon in Pisces. So that means your Aquarius Pisces departments for sure are being intensified this year for evolution. Let's just say this is your heads up. We can use this super new moon to seed our intentions and clarify our goals going into the new year. The cardinal energy of Cancer, Capricorn, Libra, Aries is all about our fundamentals and making choices and decisions in those departments of life. The messages are subtle yet fierce, clearly pointing to the end of the old as we create space and activate the fertility, which is the compost, of the new. The Capricorn Super New Moon gives us the opportunity to set a new structure and foundation in place to support our growth and evolution in the new year. It is time to recognize what you are and are not responsible for and clear a space so that you can deepen your dedication to what you actually are responsible for and for all the new choices and creativity that you will activate in the future. This is a time for renewal of what supports and protects you on a regular daily basis. Consider that if there is a new beginning in your Capricorn department, then there is some natural integration that will have to happen in the Cancer department. And to accommodate all this initiation integration energy, then the Aries Libra departments are going to have to adapt, adjust, change, and grow out of comfort zone and into new territory. That means you, the individual, are growing and changing because the new energy is being activated at home and work or in your private and public lives. Deep breath. The Capricorn lesson centers around inner authority and personal roles and responsibilities. What are you known for in your personal life? What are you known for in your professional life? This is an opportunity to clarify what sacred, heart-centered work really is for you and release any blockages to you contributing your unique piece to society. This is an opportunity to release any weakness or fear and let go of the past once and for all. It is time to center and truly own who you are and what you want from this life. And then you can use this energy to renew your commitment to living it through your own truth and purpose. You will be recognized and rewarded in equal measure to your commitment and dedication. It's all up to you. You have a clean slate to begin with now and fulfill that potential of your own being here, now, and for the future. Deep breath. Same day Friday, Chiron goes direct in Aries. So our annual healing work is about to yield some fruit. If you were born between 67 and 77, then this is very personal and part of your Chiron return, when we all do our greatest amount of healing possible for this lifetime. In general, this is an initiation because Chiron has now spent the last 50 years moving through every healing process in Aries to and through Pisces and is starting over now. So even if you never knew about Chiron, now you know, and we can all consciously co-create with it as it journeys through the signs, activating their lessons and healing processes. As it moved through Pisces 2010 to 2018, we learned about following our intuition and managing our own individual boundaries better. Now in Aries 2018 to 2027, we get to heal our identity and purpose and our essential right to be here at this miraculous time in history. Every year, Chiron retrogrades, which shifts its normal effects on our social collective realm and turns its energy inward for the individual to do some processing. So it is not a bad idea to co-create with this one consciously and annually. Anything you are ready to heal, learn about, or transform, Chiron can help you do it. And in Aries, it's all about you your choices, your purpose, your healing process, and what you learn along the way through your own experience. Deep breath. We can all consciously honor the healing, education, and personal transformation that Chiron facilitates. During 2010 to 2018, Chiron in Pisces taught us about sensitivity and boundary issues, being a spirit in human form. Now in Aries, we are opening up to the new directive of self-healing, self-assembling, and self-mastery going forward. Chiron is best known as the wounded healer, the aspect of self that came in with a wound to address this lifetime. And in your chart, it represents your healing and educational path. It is all that you learn on that journey toward wholeness and integration, and the healing and education that results from that journey. As it goes direct today, this five-month period should have revealed where you're at in your own process of evolution. This whole year has been deeply supported for a personal inventory or 
inner review. You have to be willing to face the fears and hurts, accept the losses and defeats, and then get up, dust yourself off, and try again. Chiron can help guide this process. It's time to be brave and pioneering. Clearly, the old ways no longer work. It's time to follow our instincts, although we may first have to connect to them properly. It's time to face challenges head on. And remember that though we have to do for self, which means be self-sufficient and self-contained, we do not have to do it alone. So this time is really going to support the evolution of the individual within the context of the community or their relationships. It is all connected. If one evolves, the other has to evolve too or dissolve and go away. So if one evolves, if you evolve, then your relationships evolve. If your relationships evolve, then you evolve. They're connected. And if you don't go to the next level, you usually break. So as Chiron goes direct, you may find yourself on more solid ground internally. And as you get there, another layer of healing is usually revealed too. Deep breath. Then Christmas Eve, Saturday the 24th, Mercury sextiles Neptune, and we are underway with the Mercury retrograde in Capricorn. So this is the first of three hits between Mercury and Neptune. That means our thinking and how we express ourselves and our spirituality and faith and God planet. You know, this is what we believe to be true or possible and how we're thinking these days. But it's an opportunity. Sextiles, again, allow us to gain traction and grow and move in new ways. So even though it's not a one and done, it's a process. December 24th, it's going to hit again January 2nd and February 6th, and then it will move on. This is a great energy for imagination, consciousness, and intuition. However, keeping a good filter to distinguish between your own perceptions and what you are picking up from those around you will be crucial to your success. Okay, deep breath. So that means mental boundaries are critical to your success this go-round. It's important for you to turn inward and work on your fundamentals, home, work, self, other, food, shelter, you know, basics. Your mind may be tuned in to a different channel than usual this week, and you may have to rely on other senses, like your feelings or intuitive hunches. You may be very perceptive, picking up on the thoughts and feelings of others, which if and when you are clear and your filters are working, and yield some surprising revelations about where their consciousness is at this time, for better or worse, which usually reflects an aspect of your own consciousness that you may not have been aware of. Try to avoid work that requires any attention to detail. Allow your creativity to flow freely without censoring what comes through you at this time. You can organize it later. This is the energy to explore, create, and free flow. So that actually sounds kind of nice and magical for Christmas Eve. We can be open to messages from spirit. We can start processing them in terms of how they're going to work for us in the new year when we get to spring, because like I said, it's going to do some back and forth here. We had the free introduction to Mercury retrograde in the earth signs of 23, or you can get your own tools that are customized for you with your personal activations, the Sky Council activations, a meditation and divinations for this Capricorn go round for only $50. So that link is in here as well. And I encourage you to pay attention if you have really strong Cancer Capricorn or Aries Libra, because this Mercury retrograde will be touching all those planets in some kind of way, even if it just brushes by from a little bit of a distance, you're still going to feel it. Then we know we have to make some adjustments and reset or do a new beginning, you know. Mercury goes backwards three to four times a year. That gives us three to four times a year to do a data dump, to do a mental body cleanse, to do a mental body healing session, you know, to check in. How's it been going quarterly with your thinking and ideas, thoughts, concepts, how you're expressing, your modes of expression. They change, you know, we evolve. And we should experiment. Sometimes we get locked into our everyday rhythms and we don't even try a new way. It might be more fun and interesting and more authentic for here and now. Like I said, I knew this one was going to go a little bit longer. We got planets moving into new signs, changing directions, supermoon. You know, there's a lot of intensity this week, y'all. So again, with the grounding, the hot bath with some sea salt, baking soda, and white vinegar. That's a spiritual bath. And you can add your essential oils or anything, flowers and herbs, anything else you like after that. But it cleanses your whole aura. Beyond your body, it cleanses your aura. And if you have fine sea salt, I'll do that. It's like a salt rub. You can put it in your hands and rub your body, and you'll be super smooth and delicious and smelling good and feeling lighter and brighter. 
So this is the time for that. Like I said, it's more time for us to be tuning in, being quiet, receiving our messages than it is for us to be pounding the drum and, you know, hollering for everybody to listen, right? We want to go within this winter season. That's what winter is for. So, of course, at the end of all my blogs, until we do the class in February, will be the Revelations class I'm doing with Yeye Louisa Teach. So if you really are looking to hone your skills and cultivate a connection with your higher self and your Orishas and your angels and ancestors and animal spirit guides, this class is going to be so life-changing. I can't even tell you. And the two of us together are a lot of fun. I must say, we get so much done and it's always yields more than we could ever promise up the front. Like spirit takes over, really. We've laid out a structure, but then we allow spirit to lead and we go super, super deep. So if you're wanting to really use this winter to incubate your vision for the new year, that's going to be a fantastic class to do. And for those of you wanting to go deeper into your astrology, I'm doing the Astro 101 class again. And you get a big workbook that's customized for you and all the goodies. So I do need people to register by January for that February class to kick off right. So start thinking about what you want to do in the new year. All right, everyone. I hope you have a fantastic week. Reach out if you need to. This is Kelly Beard of Karmic Tools signing off.